Hey guys, how's it going and uh, welcome back. This is going to be uh, part four of this Honda CT70 that was pretty much a barn find that a friend had in his basement forever that he probably grabbed at a yard sale. Uh, that was forever. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to go continue on trying to get this thing uh, back to roadworthy. The first three videos were first just kind of getting it running and then the last video was getting it running nice. And uh, that involved getting into the carb, valve adjustments. We uh, cleaned the fuel tank out, painted it, uh, wire repairs, the handlebars were bent to death. We've got those straightened out. But now we're gonna get into some other stuff. And I think we're gonna, what I wanna move on to next is getting the exhaust on it. We're kind of running it with no muffler. So I wanna fix that part of it. And we'll, again, I'm kind of working from the center and wanting to branch out. Well, the exhaust is in two pieces. And uh, although it may sound cool, it's uh, not very practical for running around on the road without getting into trouble. So let's see if we can go fix that up. If not, we're gonna go move over and take the one off of the possible parts bike. That looks fairly decent, but I'd rather save that for, I have a four speed that in the future is gonna get built up. And I kinda wanna save the best parts for that, or that bike that you see right there. So without further ado, uh, let's get into doing some rinsing. But first, let's cold start it. Let's see how it does. Uh, you think we can do it by hand? Turn the key on. Let's try uh, no choke. That is important. Good. So what we got is just you know, two pieces that are totally rotted right off from each other. So I'm going to try to make a clean cut on both of those so we get back to good metal. And I don't know if we should probably get into taking some of those guards out of our way that may... We could probably try it, but if that hardware decides that it doesn't want to play well, we may just leave well enough alone. This one we can get off. It looks like. Hey, almost, see if we can get that out of our way and have a little bit of work room. I'm gonna go over to the wire wheel to clean some of this stuff up and then uh, see if we can make a patch. I prep both ends and yeah, that's about the bridge we need to jump there's a bracket broken off here to kind of hammered it back into place the cage on the bottom is touching but I don't think it's going to be an issue it does have to come off and get beat but I think we can kind of move forward I was looking for slugs of some sort to you know kind of fill the gap and I didn't have anything that uh, was fitting the bill I went out in the scrap pile and uh, found this piece of metal and they appear to be almost the exact same diameter. So I'm going to go section out a piece of that, maybe a little bit on the big side. We'll kind of sneak up on it. See if we can wedge that in between, get a couple tacks on it. Let's go. This one's on slightly bit of an angle, but let's try it right there. See how that does. And there's a little patch. I'm going to kind of leave it floating. I'm going to move it around by hand and eye it up. I was trying to clamp both in place, but it was fighting me from the, the curve that's on the rest of this pipe. You can't clamp that one or that one very well. But I think we'll get her. So I'm going to get a couple tacks on that and call her one. Yeah, so you get a couple tacks on that. It's got to sit down on the tab in the back too, the other part of it. That wasn't a good ground, was it? Mm. 
getting a little hotter too. I still need to go hotter. That should be good enough if we can take it off and then weld it all the way around. I throw some paint on it. The uh, end of it's kind of blown out here, but I've tried to weld them before. This is super thin, so I, I'm going to leave well enough alone, see how it holds up. If it really blows out, then I'll uh, give it I'll give it what for, but for now, I think it might be just fine. It's kind of like running it without the silencer in it. That's all. That's set, we'll flip it over. We'll grab myself a cup of coffee while the room defumes. Heat paint. Thought I was gonna set the rag on fire, didn't you? We'll let that dry a little bit, and uh, we can work on other things before we put that back on. I think the next thing we could probably do is the crash bar. I don't even want to call it. I'm gonna call it a crash bar and skip plate. It's pretty banged up. You can see the underneath of it is, is stuffed. You know, it's, the idea is to keep the engine from getting hit, and it looks like maybe then you're gonna hit the drain plug. Can you see? Can't see. Hit the drain plug right there. So let's go unbolt that, clean it up, hit it, you know, scotch bright it, and uh, beat it back in a submission. Then we'll put that in the muffler back on. Maybe fire it up. Remember, I said in the last video that uh, little Johnny did went over to handlebars a few times and had some fun. Well, he's also smashed into some good stuff too. The kickstand or uh, foot peg crossover is a. Uh, stuffed up to the case too so i'm gonna go take it all down and beat it back into submission hopefully there's no issues with the bottom of the motor i'm not sure how a screw on an angle is going to come out that might be a little on the difficult side so if it starts doing waddling and i feel like it's going to do damage to the case i'm going to leave well enough alone and maybe we'll just get the two front ones out and get the skid plate out you can see it's ripped out on the end too and it welded Yeah, somebody was here before us has been brazed. See those bushings were brazed back on. I don't know, I think we should kind of lay it on the floor and maybe whack it with a sledgehammer right about there. Sound like a plan. Let's see how well this works. Harder! Why don't you put your foot on that? I really appreciate it. Thank you. It looks like a really small set of handlebars. Boom, boom. <laughs> 
cleaned and painted. Say this stuff's so flexible up top. I go clean her up. Let's go beat that back down to where it should go and weld that back up both sides. And putting Humpty Dumpty back together. That looks a little better. The drain plug is up, I don't know, a quarter inch or so. That's not the first thing that hits anymore. Some room between the exhaust and this one. When I put it on, it was still sitting on an angle like this, so I just put rags on there and came out with the sledge and I gave it a couple of shots and racked the whole thing square again. Pedals are not up against the engine anymore. Hard to see, can't you get in there? I changed out some hardware one of the bolts was not catching any threads or close to being stripped out so i just went i found out how long it was up inside there and i just put a a longer one up inside and now it's got some good bite to it uh, deal with that next go clean that up and there that goes. something like that we'll get that cleaned up the bling you six it thing. That looks good. And I figured out why the pipe rotted it in half. Because there's a clamp that goes right around right here and it has like an asbestos packing kind of material. As you can see it. So that holds moisture and it rotted it right in half. Wanna know how I figured that out? Because I went over to the other bike and I stole the clamp off the other bike, along with the two screws that were missing. When I did, doesn't that look familiar? <laughs> well, the answer is that. Oh, and I also remember why I ended up putting the other bike together and not this bike, because this one has this one has been uh, internalized <laughs> in its past. So who knows what's up with that? So we are going to be picking parts off this. Not saying that it's dead, but uh, I've already started by stealing some screws. So. It's fair game now. We'll fire it up. That is gas on. Key on, let's try no choke. I'm going up. I might have popped it a year ago. the inside of it now. Probably go up a hair with the idle. Think this is a bad idea? Yeah, it might be. 
<laughs> burning off all the crap, all the cleaners coming off. Well, I'm gonna let that run for a little bit, open the door. What do you think? Let's get into that mag next. I didn't have a puller for it when I first tried getting it off to, to set the, or replace the points, set the points, clean them the first time. So we kind of just did a little bit of a cleaning through the window, but this needs to come off. I now have the correct tool to pop this off. Let's see if we can get this off and uh, we also got to clean up those threads right there too. So the mag tool has two different sizes on it and there's external threads and then you push with the sander. Let's go give her a bit of fluid film, some kind of some kind of something. I think we should probably go all the way in, right? Too greasy. Can't hold on. Somebody sprayed some crap on there, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, if I had a wrench that was that size, I would have used it, but I don't. I'm gonna go call that all the way in. Give her a little lube on the tip, you know? This does the trick. Probably grab an impact. Let me grab a. Actually, we could probably pull right against that, right? Because the threads are going the opposite direction. You're just waiting for me to smash my fingers, aren't you? Yeah, me too. And that sucker's tight. I'm getting the impact. Yeah, that sucker hasn't been off in a day or two, huh? Probably the original points in it. <laughs> that worked nice. All right. Get some rust on it. It might have been our noise, too. Look the corrosion on the end of that mag. Ew. I guess if they're still working, we have new points in condenser, but it's looking a little on the crusty side, isn't it? Yeah, we just hit it with a wire wheel or something. Threads too, we gotta see about cleaning them up and getting a new nut for it. Actually, maybe we get the nut off the other bike. So gently, can we get in there? Let's see how well it's going to work with you guys sitting up there on the bench. So if I bang on the bench, it's going to move the camera. But I figured it got you nice and close. 
Let's see. I need something to pick with first. So we want to get on side of those points. That should just be a bent over one, not soldered, and the other one's holding it. Let's see if we can get under it. Or am I a liar? It doesn't really matter if I break it because I have a new one. I'm just trying to get the wires free. The wires is what we need to use over. And you think it's easy. I should probably drive a little screwdriver down inside there, tap it in there, and kind of open it up. What do you think? Those pliers probably look huge, don't they? <laughs> All right, we need that one. Should drop the points. Is it two on there? Sometimes it's just a locating pin. Yeah. And let's get rid of that condenser. 50 year old comp condenser and sweep that thing on top right there is a sweep an oiler yeah. go clean that up and put new stuff in and I'm going through the flywheel and I'm cleaning it up and all right am I crazy is that a face right there looking at me <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think it's just me. Could be. It's pretty pitted. That's where the uh, the points run on this. And cleaned up with a wire wheel. There was a bunch of that. Knocked that down for the most part. Probably gonna hit with a little bit of more scotch bright me. I got uh, wire wheels the only thing I've gone over it with now. Yeah, I might go over with some real fine scotch bright and probably like some WD or something. A fine grade. Oh uh, actually it may probably a fine sandpaper. Like a fifteen hundred or something. Eight hundred. I wiped that smile right off his face. <laughs> I hit it with 360. Anything else wasn't really cutting anything. I can leave it at that. It feels smooth to the touch. You know, it's just a little fiber pad on the points. Rubs on that cam on the high side, not all the way around. Yeah, so when the flywheel goes on, this pad right here rubs on that cam. And then on this pad right here, grease goes and it kind of maintains, maintains grease on the flywheel. You actually just put it on the flywheel and run it around a couple times too. But essentially you're just trying to... This, this is what came with it. You're just trying to wet the end of that pad so in the future... It just keeps a little bit of lube on the keem shaft. All right, I'm going to go side all those wires on and get it back together. We've got to find a nut yet too. That's soldered on. So when the mag is going to be back on the flywheel, this is your adjustment in here. And this tab is going to rest up against that can that's on a flywheel that I showed you. And open the points. So you find the high side and you reach and you loosen up this screw. And you take a screwdriver here and you, you rack the points 
to change the gap of the points. Uh, timing, this doesn't have an adjustable plate, so it's not movable. The only slight timing you can kind of do is probably by tweaking the points open and closed a little bit will change when the cam lobe is coming around if it's a little uh, lower or a little higher it just changes the point of when the, the cam touches it so it does kind of bump the timing a little bit but not a great amount we shouldn't need it anyway though so we're gonna go i gotta go look up what this is supposed to be and uh, we'll get this back together i was able to get the Uh, and now to start. We should shove a piece of string to keep the engine from turning over. I don't have room to get the They're standing a little too close. Back up. Let's see. <laughs> I won't be able to get it back off because the motor spins. Give it a couple of little chasings of the threads. That can never happen. As long as that does not strip out when we go ooga dooga. We good. We're gonna go call it that. <laughs> not push our luck. I think we got it pretty good though. Let's see how well this shows up. On top, you can't see. On top of the mag, right here, in case there's a mark. And then you have an F and a T on the flywheel. So top that center. That's kind of where you're setting the points up, you're lining it up. And the F is kind of, you're looking to have, if you guys can see the points. So at T, right there is where I adjusted them. I set them to 15 thou. I think it says between 16 and 12, I went for 15. And essentially, you want them to be closed right when F hits that line up there. And I would say, you put O meter on it and check it, but I'm gonna go call that good. I'm probably what's going to happen is after this thing is running on the road, I may just kind of pop back in here and open the points and close the points a little bit, see what best performance I get out of it, running the fuels that we're running today and, you know, whatever shape the engine's in. So I'm happy we're leaving it like that for now. Throw the new plug in it and pop the old one out. And this one I just grabbed from my stash just for the physical size. And if you look at the number, and you look at the number of of the new one, I had the right one. Every once in a while, you get lucky. Guess what you make sure it still runs, right? Key. I don't know about gas or anything like that. Nice. I think the next thing I want to look into is the. Uh, cam chain tensioner, so you can get rid of some of that noise. So I'm going to go take that 10 millimeter out. That's going to pop a cover off on the other side. We can see the top of the cam gear. And I want to be able to kind of poke around in there and see how much slack that we really do have. Let's get a little love tap, see if that'll pop off. Yeah. Now we can see the chain. Uh, it's pretty sloppy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's your noise. I'm not sure how we're going to be able to see. I'm trying to get the whole thing in but not be too far away. So, again, on top of the flywheel. Uh, T is top dead center. And on... The cam, there's a little O right here, 
and I can't see because the gas gets off, but there's a mark dead center on this. If it jumped a tooth, that would be off one way or another. That seems like it's fine. I'm gonna leave that alone. We're gonna try adjusting the adjuster. Adjusting the adjuster. Down here, it's got a, a nut and uh, a stud with a nut on it. Crack the nut loose. I'm gonna try running it in with it not running. Normally, I think you adjust it running, but we're gonna see if we can kind of get some of that slap out of there. Slop, slap, you know. Let's see if we can crack that loose. I think there's two adjusters on this too. The nut is. There you go. I had to get the nut free from the. the nut was sticking to the stud. I hate when it happens. <laughs> All right, let's go see if we can run that in. So we feel drag. A hit and come back a little. Let's see if that made a difference. It made a big difference. It, the, the chain is good. Let's just leave it right there. I like that. Don't want it too tight because it'll eat itself up, it'll burn up its, its innards, you know. It'll burn the, the cam. bearings, for lack of a better term. I don't think it has bearings. I think it rests right on the right on the aluminum. All right. That's a little better. You think we're missing a screw there? Or you think that's just a... And if we are, <laughs> the next question is where did it go? I think so. So I could feel threads. <laughs> the story continues as it reveals itself. Uh, I'm going to go over to the other motor, see if there's one on there we can go steal. That was here we got one. Not a washer there, is there? Nope. I think that machine just cried a little. I'll run that home. That don't feel good. Let's go crack. The other two loose. Hmm. Who's your daddy? It's in there. I'm not telling. I'm gonna try to get you any of the adjust valves with me. It's at top dead center. And by judging by my feeler pack, a number three is bent over. We're gonna go with number three. Three thou that is. That's still too loose. This was super loose when we first got on the first video. I went in, the thing was like 40 thou. And I just ran it in by hand. So we are going to actually use a feeler gauge on it. Got your rag on it. You gotta watch that stud doesn't turn when you go to crank it down though. Too tight. You're gonna have to hold that top one from turning.
call it right there. That feels pretty good. I need to see him on the bottom. Don't forget trying to film that one. Same idea. Yeah, the bottom one was too tight. I opened it up some. Let's go get this all buttoned back up. Fire it up and have a listen. Hopefully she's nice and quiet. I'm gonna change the oil in the thing too. There was no oil in it at first. And I just added some. So by running, I'm sure we kind of sludged around the crap in it. Possibly even the head of a screw will fall out. Find out. Yeah, those are 17. Yeah. Right, let's fire it one more time, see how it how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds better. I think it would. Oh man. Not quite sure with the gas again. I guess reserve. a little bit better though I think it's better hmm. been running in about I don't know 10 15 minutes Let's go get the oil out of it. Let's see what we got. Yeah, pretty dirty. That's what we wanted. We want to get the crap out of it, you know. First oil change too. <laughs> Fifty years. I took the magnet and went down inside and I fished around inside the motor for five minutes or so. Flopping all around, changing all different angles and poking and hoping and see if I can find the, uh, the end of that stud to no avail. So I have a feeling maybe somebody was putting it together and broke it. Not sure of that though. And just said, ah, the heck with it. <laughs> but it could be still flopping around in there. We're going to find out. Motor's kind of tired. Uh, it's a little smoky, the time chain is kind of clacky, but again, you know, it is getting on 50 years old, so it's allowed to be, I guess. We're just going to keep moving forward with it. Uh, I'm going to plug back in it, fill it back up with oil, fire it up one more time. We're getting close to the end of today, though, I think. Oil's changed, fire it up one more time. That's the end, I guess. You get it with a half a kick. Yeah, it's been around five ten minutes. I'm gonna think about. It. I wonder if some of the oil that was in the muffler, in the exhaust, is kind of burning off. So it's getting smoke from the exhaust heating up and burning out. I think it's more the case than the actual engine. Seems it's gotten a lot better. Hey right, guys. I think I'm gonna go call it a night. I better with where I got. I wish the time machine was quieter, but it is what it is. So I think the next thing we'll start working out. We'll probably pull the rear wheel off. We'll do chains, sprockets, you know, check the rear brakes, clean the fender up, and then the front end. Now hopefully, I don't know. I'm guessing two more videos, but sometimes that goes, you know, much more in depth than that. But I'm happy with it. We got uh, what we fixed today. The foot pegs. The crash bar, I guess we'll call it. The exhaust, the flywheel nut, changed that. Adjusted the cam timing, uh, cam chain. Adjusted the valves. I fall over the chair. Yeah, cleaned up the chrome hole. All right, well we got something done. All right, guys, with that, I want to thank you all for hanging out. Uh, we enjoy you guys. 
doing some wrenching with me and uh, just having fun in the garage working on old rusty junk. So until the next one, see you later. Bye. Oh, and the battery's been humming for a couple of days over here on the charger. Everybody take it off, but it's at 6.62 is across the battery what the voltage is right now. So that worked out pretty good. A little winter riding around with my brother. Northern New Jersey came across a yard sale, garage sale, indoors. And we grabbed a couple things. Uh, a jack. A big pressure washer. Missing the hose. And it's been sitting for a tad. But it's a lemon horse. A nice beefy pump. So hopefully that'll come back to life. Should make for a good wallet run video. Figured just take a second. And I got grabbed a couple power strips. Right there, those two guys. Yeah. First one of the season, guys. First yard sale of the season.